we played Isle of Wight today. The Isle of Wight Festival on the main stage, which was phenomenal. So many people. And it's my first festival. I've never played a festival before. And Bastard's actually also never played a festival before. So it was a first for both of us. Um, it was phenomenal. Uh, usually, obviously, the festival crowd is not your crowd. So that didn't come specifically for the band. So your expectations are usually a little bit lower. But the crowd sang along to pretty much every song so loudly. And they were so into it. It was phenomenal. It was so much fun. Um, what's not going to be phenomenal, what's not going to be so much fun is... Um, flying back to LA tomorrow. It's been amazing. It's my first touring experience. It's been nothing short of spectacular and phenomenal and pretty much perfect, you know? It's been like effortless. Um, really amazing first touring experience. Getting off the club. It's time to say goodbye. I'm back. This is really strange. But it's really cool as you know. Wow, man. I'm trying to think of something really potent and poignant to say, but it's, uh, there's nothing. I'm just, it's just, uh, it's cool to be back in this room. And I remember two months ago when I, when I started this whole little video episode thing by saying I'm going to start telling you a story um, and now I'm back and the story's kind of over a little bit it feels very different for me to be back in this room and not just this room but LA feels different to me Los Angeles feels like a different place and I'm still kind of figuring out why but honestly I think I got a lot of clarity in England and I think I got a lot of clarity in terms of what I want to do with music, what I want to do with um, my life and friendships and relationships and what, wh which things are most valuable to me. I feel more focused and I feel like there's more clarity and I feel like there's less pressure going forward because I know what I want to do now and I guess that will be revealed over the next few weeks and months. Um, as I'm figuring more of it out myself, but I think it's very um, therapeutic to be to, to record these videos, and I, I've enjoyed your engagement and your response and your involvement and your attention so much. The fact that you guys watch these videos means the world to me, and it makes me really think about what I'm saying. And um, and it's good to be forced to reevaluate, and these videos have forced me to reevaluate. And on the other side of reevaluating, I've come out with more clarity and more focus and I have a better idea of what I want to do. And you are largely to thank for that because you've watched and listened to this and given feedback and been, and been supportive. And so thank you guys so much for that. I'm probably going to keep making videos. Um, I'm kind of wrapping things up, I guess. I'm going to be doing more shows with the guys pretty soon. I don't know for how much longer, as long as they'll have me, I'll play drums for them. But I'm doing some summer shows with the, the busted guys as well. And yeah, then we'll just take it from there and we'll see what happens. I'm very excited. Very excited. It feels like a different room and LA feels like a different city and I have big ideas. They're not even really that big, I guess. They're just important to me.
I enjoy looking back on experiences and kind of thinking what changed and what didn't change. But I do want to quickly just mention something that I definitely learned and that had a huge effect on not just drumming and how I approach drumming, but also a huge effect on um, who I am as a human being. This is a question I get asked all the time, and it is, how do you deal with stage fright? And how do you deal with playing in front of lots of people? And I feel like I'm kind of a simplistic person, so I boil it down to its simplest form. And the reason why most people ask that question is because they don't want to make a mistake on stage. Now, can I say, just from personal experience, a big reason why I struggle with stage fright sometimes is because I have really high expectations of myself. And I think sometimes that other people have similarly high expectations of myself when of, of me rather when they rarely do and it comes down for me I'm gonna get really deep for a second but it comes down to identity if you make drumming and playing the drums an enormous part of your identity you're gonna struggle with stage fright you're really gonna struggle with it playing in front of people because you're always gonna feel like they're judging you because it's such a big part of your identity and the crux for me is that it's not a part of my identity and if it is a part it should be a really small part because I'm a human being before I'm a drummer and hear me out for a second I know a lot of people might be offended by that statement I love drums I love drumming I love music it's a big part of who I am but it's not it's not all that I am you know I'm more than just a guy that plays drums on stage if you put all of your identity in your ability to play the drums that's a sucky way to live life, man, because you're gonna keep comparing yourself to everybody and the only way that you feel worthwhile and the only way that you feel any kind of confidence is if you feel that you're a good drummer. And a lot of people do that with different things. A lot of people do that with sports or even with any career, really. Like you put your identity in what you do rather than who you are. This was a significant realization for me because it took away all of my stage fright when I realized that my worth as a human being is not tied to my ability to play drums. If I make a mistake on the drum set in front of 10,000 people, I'm not any less of a human being. I still get to be a decent, respectful, considerate, loving human being that's able to foster healthy relationships and be fulfilled in my life. That has no connection to my ability to play drums. And if you really boil it down to what it is, if I make a mistake in front of 10,000 people, nothing changes. Maybe I feel a little bit embarrassed. The only reason I feel embarrassed is because of my ego. And then it's good to feel embarrassed. Then it's good to get a little reality check. Don't take it so seriously. Don't put so much value on playing the perfect set, regardless of whether it's for five people or 50,000 people. And all that to say, the reason that I, <laughs> the reason that I say this is because that's probably the question that I get asked the most, is how do you get over stage fright? How do you get confidence? And the answer to that question, which is a loaded answer, is you find out who you are and you become okay with who you are. My faith in Jesus has a really, really important effect on how I approach that question. And I know it doesn't for everybody and that's okay. But for me, it comes down to identity. And the biggest lesson that I learned in this whole experience, the thing that took me from being incredibly nervous in front of 10,000 people to not being incredibly nervous is that I think I just became more confident in who I am as a human being, aside from being confident in my ability as a drummer. I'm not just a drummer, you know? I'm a human being before I'm a drummer. You're worth more than what you do, you know? I hope that means something to you guys. And um, 
I'm really thankful for this experience because I'm really thankful for that lesson. And I'm really thankful that I got to learn that and take that with me now forever.